speaker tonight is Darren Kraus. Darren is the managing editor of Metro Calgary, or in 2017, he is known as a media elite who peddles fake news. Ladies and gentlemen, Darren Kraus. <laughs> Thank you so much for that warm welcome. And yes, I'm here to talk to you all about fake news. Uh, we, uh, I, I'm the one who, after a rock, paper, scissors tournament, uh, ended up being the sacrificial lamb here. So I will break the ice and uh, get you started with tonight's talk on transparency. So we are going to do this all in the dark, just so you can see. It's okay. It's okay. What a way to start. Like, I wasn't nervous to begin with. <laughs> thank you. You know what? Zane was right. The laughter is a little bit uh, liberal. So thank you. Keep it coming. Uh, anytime you guys are ready. So when I was asked to present on this uh, topic, particularly in this format, uh, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I became really anxious. Um, I didn't have the foggiest clue what I was going to talk about. And I was already uh, beating myself up over what kind of images I was going to use. And a thousand things started swirling in my head. And if you're anything like me, that just makes things worse. At first, I wanted it to be funny. You know, a couple of laugh out loud moments. Talk to you a little bit about the newspaper business and how we rarely get the answers that we want. That is, unless we jump through 80 hoops to get it. But then I thought, no, that's going to be a little bit lame and predictable. So I kept thinking. So now I wanted to make it <laughs> profound. I wanted slide number 20 to come up there and it be an absolutely mind-blowing moment where I would just drop the mic, <laughs> the lights would go down, you would sit there in silence, and all you'd hear is my footsteps walking up the stage. <laughs> but then I went to inspirational. I was going to give you a game plan that would change your life. It would, be, it would be an amazing thing where you all rushed up here, you carried me off the stage, <laughs> chanting my name, Darren, Darren. <laughs> but really, I stopped myself and I said, cut the crap, what is it re really after here? I just wanted you to like me. I just want you to respect me. I just wanted you to get some sort of enjoyment out of my performance. The perception is everything. So, if I've left you thinking, where is he going with this? You know, you're not alone. You're probably scratching your head. Bill Gates is clearly thinking it. And after preparation of slide six, I was kind of thinking the same thing myself, to be honest with you. But the funny thing is, perception is where transparency begins and ends. Perception is reality for so many. Is the glass half full or is it half empty? Governments, organizations, people, they actually play off of your perceptions in order to generate their success. And in doing so, transparency falls down the ladder of importance. So, audience participation. And Mike told me this was a little bit of a gamble, so, but I'll try it. What are we really after with transparency anyways? Anyone, shout it out. What are Truth. we after? Truth. Truth. Oh, you know what? How did I know that was going to be it? <laughs> Here's the thing though, truth is the obvious one. But the fact is, everyone's so-called truths go through all of these filters you see up here. They, everything from political beliefs, religious perspectives, family values, genetics, epigenetics. Truth influences perception, and perception can often be at odds with transparency. So what are we really after? Facts. That's where this guy comes in. Sorry. For a newspaper editor, transparency is the battle between perception and facts. The two have a close relationship in this business, but it's not always a pleasant one. Clear, transparent information can be as elusive as this guy up here. It should be easy to get a straight answer, but it, not as long as public perception matters. In journalism, you'll often hear people say, they're only as good as the information that they're given. In the next news story you read, consider that we are outnumbered four to one by PR and media professionals, and each one of them has public perception top of mind. So now, imagine this. <laughs> I'm actually in this photo. Your job is to find out whether or not I'm wearing Speedos or whether I'm wearing board shorts. The problem is, if there's five people madly splashing about, you don't even know if I'm in that picture. You, you can say that I am, but I might not really be there. But, in actuality, I am, and 
I am wearing board shorts. <laughs> Obviously, facts and information are gold in my business, and like most treasures, they're worth guarding, especially if public perception is at stake. I mean, what if we got the information and we were to share it with the general public? Chaos would ensue. But what are they hiding? What are they afraid of? Some organizations do it right. Mount Royal University, in a recent example of a plane crash, went beyond expectation. They provided every bit of pertinent information we as reporters wanted before we even knew we wanted it. No spin, no, no uh, protection, no hiding from the obvious. They gave facts. So now it's honesty time. Transparency is a buzzword. We hear it a lot. It gets a lot of lip service, but rarely do we actually demand it. Some, like Mount Royal, just do it. Others, only when it benefits public perception. And there are those without transparency at all. So that brings us back to truth. If our truths create perception, and organizations play off those perceptions, for us to achieve transparency, we need to knock down all those preconceived notions that we have, and all of the things we think about, social, political, personal, just as uh, William Blake has the cavern here, it needs to be torn down. And our pal Narcissus here, you see him up there, he became enamored with his own reflection. He refused to give up that image of what he was, and he paid the ultimate price for it. Organizations bank on us holding tight that image that we have of ourselves and of them, and they work hard to keep it. So, be vulnerable. Be open, question, seek differing opinions. Seek facts to form your truths. Don't just seek confirmation of the truths you already hold. When you, like this mean that dire quote sums it up, when you start to change the way you see things and question the truths you hold, that's when transparency reveals itself. But it's only gonna be a buzzword that you flirt with unless we're willing to model it ourselves. I came up here, I opened up by revealing some of those truths about how I was feeling about tonight's performance. And that I needed to shed them. I needed to shed them to grow and learn. And in doing so, I became more transparent. <laughs> So you obviously know what this slide's about here. Once we begin to model transparency, whether it's personal, organizational, governmental, once we shed those truths, start seeking facts instead of reaffirming those truths, like this fella up here, we all start asking hard questions of the world, and at that point, transparency will not only be commonplace, it will be expected. Thank you.